I'm Nancy Yoon, and I am the youngest of five daughters. My mom and dad came in the 70s to Koreatown, and my dad was in the military. I, I believe he was a captain in the Korean army, and he went to um, America several times, worked, I think, in the Korean CIA or something like that, and he experienced America, and it was just a wonderful country. And uh, I believe my mother's brother sponsored us to come mm -hmm. to America. And them having five daughters in the 70s, it was a, a very interesting time. What I always say, like, from what I heard, because I was only four years old when we came, but um, that you were lucky if you just married up, you know, you didn't have careers then. And to have five daughters in the 70s in Korea mm -hmm. was a difficult time. So they sacrificed as immigrants to come here. And my mother had maids in Korea, but when they came to America in Los Angeles, we actually settled in Koreatown. Um, you know, they started from nothing. So we have a funny story that um, we were at the airport. I can't remember this because I was four years old. I can't remember that, but um, I heard that we had put um, all the money that we had into this little doll that you know, that I was supposed to carry called Lucy. And at the airport, I mean, I was four years old, I threw this doll away. <laughs> so, so, you know, I kind of just was a little kid and they were screaming and they had the money and, and this really, this money was really kind of like the, the beginning of our future of the American dream. But um, my mom and dad, my dad worked in the county and he didn't make that much. Um, and my mother, she worked in the factories in Los Angeles. And she learned how to sew and she made 10 cent pockets in Koreatown. And we first, I think, lived in like a one bedroom apartment with the, um, you know, the pull out couch. I mean, can you imagine seven people like distribute that all in a room? And um, I think I was on the sleeper couch with them because I was small. But my mom used to work, you know, seven days a week. And it's something that is so dear to my heart because I believe that they sacrificed so much for us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, eventually my sisters and I did fairly well. 20 something years ago, my dad died from cancer. He had stomach cancer. And that was the hardest thing for me. Um, and then I took care of my mom for 20 years because she was an immigrant and being kind of sheltered in that Korean community and society, she didn't learn English very much and she wasn't a very good driver. So um, unfortunately, six years ago, my mom died in a head-on car accident. I always say, when you lose both your parents, you feel like an orphan and it doesn't matter how old you are. But that really uh, changed my life. Well, I was always a Christian, had a very, very close relationship with God, but uh, just losing both my parents, uh, I dedicated myself to God. And, uh, you know, I know it's not that kind of show, but my mom came to me as a ghost, <laughs> as a mist. And um, she came to me three days after her car accident. I've never seen a ghost in my life. Um, we were living in Marina Del Rey. We were living on the second floor with a, you know, sliding door. Um, open and when you see a cloud and it looked like this floating like a mist logic takes place and you say oh somebody's smoking downstairs or something like that and it's going to dissipate it didn't do anything for like five minutes and I ignored it because I've never seen a ghost in my life and I'm you know watching TV and all of a sudden in the corner of my eye the whole mist turns into a bucket of water like a spray of water and that was so clear to me. I jumped up, went to my TV, because I literally thought somebody sprayed water, right? And I felt it, nothing. So we have the funeral for my mom. My mom always said to my pastor weird stuff, like, you have to do my funeral. Every day they would talk and she'd say, you have to do my funeral. Anyways, um, my, my pastor flew to the funeral. That day of the funeral, World Vision Church, that new church had a new pastor here. He called in sick on my mom's funeral, 500 people. If my pastor from Korea wasn't there, the whole funeral would never have happened. So thank God for that. And it was a beautiful service. 
we go to dinner that night and I'm very close to my pastor. I said, Pastor Kim, I got to tell you something. Um, you know, I saw this ghost or mist. And then, and then he's like, I believe you. His eyes were wide open. He goes, I believe you because she came to see me too. So it was my mom. And for him, he had to have, you know, her come as a vision. Otherwise, he would not know who it is, right? So he's in Korea. He said he was kind of, you know, ready to go to sleep and stuff in the living room. All of a sudden, he sees my mom vision, like half or full, wearing a white hanbok. And she's coming at him, coming at him five times. And he said, and he's a pastor. He's like, you know, done funerals and stuff. He said he's never seen a ghost in his life. So he was so scared, he went to his you know, wife's room, you know, and he said, oh my God, I'm coming to the funeral. So from that, like every single thing happened. And then we had a wedding, funeral and a wedding. We had a, a wedding for my nephew, which was already planned in Sonoma. My husband and I were supposed to take my mom to you know, that hotel. And it, I was, you know, it's a week after my mom died, I go to the registration and I say, you know, my mom passed away. We don't need the other room, you know. And I always kind of collect magazines, you know, from mm -hmm. hotels and stuff. And I remember grabbing one of the travel and leisure magazines. And that night, I was really, really missing my mom. I made an, a cry to God and my mom. I said, I want a black and white sign. I want a black and white sign that you are okay and that you're in heaven and everything's going to be okay. And the next day, my sister, my husband, I, and her son went to dinner at a French restaurant. We open up, you know, the menu. It's white with black writing. Nancy's fried oysters, which is one of my favorite foods. And we're like, oh, that's such a coincidence. That's so cute, you know? Next day, we go to brunch. We go to a totally different bakery, open up the menu in Sonoma, and it's white with black writing, Nancy's scones, which is my other favorite food. And then we're like, oh, that's weird. Maybe uh, Nancy's the mayor of Sonoma. That's such a weird coincidence. And then um, we, we had the wedding and then we drove back down to Carmel, which was on the way home. I grabbed the magazine that was supposed to be in my mom's room, Travel and Leisure. I open it up. It's white page in there and it says, Thank you, Nancy, for 20 years. Crazy. And again, it doesn't hit you. You know, your rational brain. I was like, oh, that's cool. Thank you, Nancy. You know, 20 years, huh? Took a picture of it because I'm like, oh, I'm going to show my friend. I flipped the page and it says, thank you, Nancy, from one great dame to another. Thank you, flip the page. Thank you, Nancy, from, you know, life's amazing journey. And I'm like, what the heck? I start crying. I'm like, it literally read like a love letter from my mom. And here it is, white with black writing. Thank you, Nancy, for 20 years. Now, you can call it a coincidence, like, but that was just like the beginning of so many things. My mom never threw anything away. And so my husband made a joke about her. He said, if your mom ever comes back, she's going to come back as a mom. <laughs> and she did. I went to a silent retreat and all of a sudden I'm praying and this moth is flying around while I'm praying and crying about my mom. This happened a couple months after she died and I told you all these things happened and I'm really communicating with my mom. Huge moth. I looked it up. It's this big and it's black and gray and it's called a death moth. Death moth. It's like really big. It's not the ones that, you know, are like the clothes moths. And this thing was flying around and just kind of landing on top of my bed. And I felt so ugh, like, is this a sign again? So I go out and it was at a silent retreat, Catholic, you know, Abbey. And there are all these stations of the cross and it's pitch dark. And I walk the stations of the cross and I'm praying to my mom, praying to God. And then all of a sudden there's the moon shining. I, I look up, I'm crying and it says, Jesus wept for his mother. And I was like, <laughs> like, I need those kind of God coincidences to give me strength and know that there is a God. Uh, another crazy story, this moth would fly right onto my window. Um, and then I got HSN. HSN is, you know, like QVC. 
I got top four. They flew me out to Florida. I was one of the top four to be a host. It was about jewelry, you know? And my mom's favorite thing was jewelry, HSN, QVC. She was on all day long watching TV. Really weird things. Um, I was doing research for this, you know, this audition. And I put in this notebook, HSN, and I closed it and there was a pen in there. Closed this notebook completely. It's like, like a book. I open it up. Guess what's in there? Moth. A moth. <laughs> this big, the death moth. Alive. Mm. HSN, pen, moth. And the moth flies away. And this is not a normal moth. This is this big. And it's the same moth that keeps coming to me. Mm. And all these kind of things happened from that. And I just felt like these were all signs. And I stopped praying. Mm. You know why? Because I talk to God every single day, every moment. It's a conversation to me. And my mom is here. And there's this thing called guardian angel. And she's, she's with me at all times. So as hard as it is, and it has not been easy this last year and a half, trust me, it's been very hard. It's been very hard. Um, I just feel protected and guarded with my mom. So my background is um, started in finance and uh, went to Disney, corporate Disney. And I didn't really like finance. I pursued that path because my oldest sister was in accounting. And I went into casting at Disney Channel and went very creative. Mm -hmm. and. Um, then went to director of marketing at Fox Family, Fox Kids. So I had an entertainment background. And then there was a time that I was doing all this casting and development and programming. And I said, you know what? I can be in front of that camera. And it was really probably like Kelly Hu and you know just a few Asian American actresses. And really at that time, there weren't that many roles. And it was just a really hard time to even kind of get that work. But I started kind of hosting at that time. And um, eventually just kind of moved up you know, the, the ladder or did hosting. I moved to Europe for five years because I eventually married my Austrian husband. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole kind of, you know, career story there. But um, what I'm saying is that I had moved up the ladder, but when my mom died, I really felt like, okay, I got to reset and I want to change my life. And how do I, God, like, how do I use all of this? Like, Somehow I'm in entertainment. I got into nonprofits. I, you know, was a host. Like I said, God, how can I use all my experiences, my past, my knowledge, and why don't you use me? And then somehow I got this, uh, it was all God coincidence, but this development job at Fuller Seminary. Never had a um, religious job in my life, and I did development there. And really, there were so many signs for me, and I started getting involved with the Korean American community in Los Angeles. And that's when I kind of came back, I would say. But um, it was interesting to come back to the Korean American community. And I, I met so many incredible people that introduced me to everything that was happening. And I started posting you know, things on Facebook. And I realized there's so many resources. There's so much information. There's so many things that are happening in, in our Asian American community. So we just started covering events and doing this stuff on Facebook. and. My husband said, hey, what are you guys doing? Why don't you create you know, a group? So we created a Facebook group, and it was called Asians in LA. And you know, ironically, it launched with the premiere of Crazy Rich Asians. We were on the red carpet. It, was, it wasn't the big premiere, but it was one of the premieres. And um, we just turned that camera on, and we started doing some interviews and stuff. And, and who knew that it was like the launch of diversity in Hollywood and everything else? And, we just kept going at it and we ended up you know creating a mission and it was inform inspire and influence together i believe in god coincidences that's just how i live my life and every door that has opened every opportunity that happened is not for me but it's allowing myself to just kind of walk through with god whatever that mission is and He's blessed us in so many ways. And so we're able to bless others, right? And that's what's happened. And we become kind of crucial in our Asian American community, which is just amazing. Like it's just been mutual for everybody. And I really enjoy connecting everyone. That's just always kind of been my thing.
and to be able to represent, I have to say that is what made me so happy to kind of look around and go, you know what, we're here, we've got a seat at the table and, and we're gonna talk about things that's gonna change the rest of our world forever. My name is Nancy Yoon and this is my Korean American story.